Thank you for joining us. This is Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. And you're listening to the Diesel Performance Podcast. Guys, it has been a crazy month over at uh, Calibrated Power, DuramaxTuner.com. We've had this huge 15% off Easy Link tuning sale going on. Chris, you've been pretty well consumed with, with helping customers the last few weeks, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're, there's no secret, you know, amongst everyone else in the U.S., you know, there's a stay-at-home order in place for most states. Um, there's no secret as us being on the show. We've, uh, we've talked about staying and working from home. Uh, we're nine weeks into this right now. And I can honestly say that when this first came up, I was excited to work from home. I don't know how it's possible, but I, I, I can honestly say I am busier being at home than I would be at work. And maybe it's because I can't leave my work at work and come home. Like everything's consumed <laughs> and it's all in one house. But, uh, you know, a lot of, it's very receptive on, on the easy link sale. Paul, I do want to mention, and, and you hadn't mentioned it before, but we also have a 15% off on our five to six speed conversion kits, which are going to support your 01 to 05, 2500, 3500 Duramaxes, along with the 01 to 05 Kodiak Top Kicks. Um, and there's been an overwhelmingly amount of requests and responses on that as well. So between those two components, um, you know, it's, it's pretty much consumed a lot of my time. I, I've been busy. So it's been a home run to say the least. Yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, always excited to hear from that. And guys, thank you to all of you awesome podcast listeners who took the time to send us a message, reach out to us, let us know, hey, I was listening to the show. I love it. That's why I'm getting this. Or if you're on the phone with one of our guys, Chris, or any of the others, and yeah. letting them know, hey, I listen to you guys on the podcast. That really means yeah. a lot to us. That keeps us motivated to keep making this show. Um, absolutely. You know, some of the other guys that we get really excited when we talk about working on a build together is like when I think about our white Cummins at the shop and I think about the Exergy parts on there, I think about the WC Fab parts on there, I think about builds that we've worked on personally at, uh, for the company and and all of a sudden you step back and you're like, oh yeah, that this is what it's about. This this is why we use those same vendors every time for every build because we know what we're going to get and we love right. what we're going to get. What's really cool as you bring that up is there was a recent project that WC Fab had and they uh, they brought it over to have it on the dyno, okay? And what was really interesting is um, – it was a truck, uh, it was a, is a, a Duramax, an 08 Duramax, and it had a very similar setup to an LMM that I had uh, a year or two ago. Um, and it had extra G injectors, it had extra G injection pumps, and it had a, you know, a WC fab compound turbo setup on it. And we were going on bets as to what the truck was going to make. And the injector size was similar to what I had before pump, all that stuff was similar. So, you know, I put a bet on what the truck was going to make. Again, two trucks, two completely different years, right? I, I had my truck one year, a couple of years back. This truck is, is now in the, in, in, uh, in the present. And the truck made almost identical power with very similar street manners as to what my Duramax made a couple of years back. So when we talk always about consistency, you know, when I, when I go and talk to a guy about doing a, a build or a horsepower setup, and I say, okay, you know what, if you run 100% over or 150% over and you run this injection pump with this turbo combination, this is what you're going to get. I can say that in confidence because of the consistency, because I know where the parts are coming from and I know what craftsmanship is being, you know, uh, invested into the product. Um, the truck ended up making almost identical power to what my older amounts made uh, within about five horsepower <laughs> to be exact. And then tunability. You know, when guys call in and they want to make this crazy power, but they want to keep smoke output to a minimum or smokeless or even a stock replacement injector, again, the consistency is there with these products to help achieve those, you know, types of goals. Absolutely correct. And hey, somebody who's been through having to overcome obstacles and work towards achieving goals on a build um, is definitely who we're going to be talking to today. So I had a chance a little while back to speak with Jerry Havman about his truck and some of his experience getting into this diesel performance game. Let's kick it over to that, that conversation.
All right, guys, it's time for one of my new favorite parts of our show. I, I think this segment's really going to resonate with you guys. It's where we got our start building the Diesel Performance Podcast, and that's listener ride reviews. Uh, today we have on a very special guest, Jerry Havman. Jerry, how the hell are you? Uh, I am doing awesome, Paul. Awesome. Excellent. Well, hey, thank you so much for being here uh, and taking some time out to talk with our listeners and talk with our audience about your truck. I I know we've had on some guys with some heavily modified trucks, and I thought this was going to be a really cool opportunity to maybe get get started talking with somebody who's at the beginning of the process instead of already at the end of it. Uh, But before we get too far in, Jerry, tell me about how you got your start in diesel performance. Well, I've I've always been around diesels. My dad was a long-haul truck driver, but uh, as far as the light-duty diesels go, uh, I don't remember the year, but it was the first year of the Power Stroke badge whenever they redesigned the engine, late 90s, and I had a buddy of mine who bought an F-350 with the new Power Stroke on the farm, and we went for a ride in that thing almost every day, (laughs) and it blew me away blew me away i was like there's no way you know and that kind of got the diesel bug and uh the first diesel i bought was the old 6.2 liter 1984 chevy and yeah uh built that into a rock yeah i yeah. <laughs> I, I had the sm 465 stick shift in it i built a rock crawler out of it and that thing would crawl anywhere i pointed it <laughs> it was just unbelievable Oh, yeah. So now, uh, yeah, I finally got an opportunity to buy a 2006 Dodge Cummins. Uh, back, bought it in 2015 with 42,000 miles on it. And I currently have 80,300 as we okay. see right now. This is, this is your baby, huh? This thing doesn't, oh, this I, thing's not doing a, a long haul every week, that's for sure. No. No, no. I, uh, <laughs> I live in the Midwest where there's salt. I had to go uh, way out west to go get it. So there's no rust or nothing on it. I'm trying to keep it. I'm going to retire here in, in a number of years. And I just love it. I'm hoping to pull my fifth wheel with it whenever I retire. And right now I'm pulling the family camper with it. So oh, That's uh, the dream. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of playing around with it, but yeah, <laughs> I I um, have a large family, so I got a limited budget, you know, and I just want to make the smart moves on uh, building it, and of course, I'd like to have a little bit more uh, power out of it and a little bit of towing experience, and, but trying to do it on a budget, but I'm also all but I'm also all about buying it once, overbuilding it, so let it last. Oh, Jerry, this is. I, I couldn't have come up with a better guest to have on the show today. I'm so excited to talk about some of this stuff um, because because you are you, you're you're showing us that like this is what diesel performance is all about. Yeah, there's drag racing. Yeah, there's sled pulling. Yeah, there's dirt drags and dyno competitions, and that stuff's awesome. We love that stuff. But so many of us are just never going to build a thousand horsepower truck. So many of us are going to go out and we're going right. to find something that's reliable, that's dependable, that, that we can take our family out in. We can, like you said, haul the trailer when we're retired. That's the dream. Uh, you know, we want to be able to do those things. But, hey, hell, we're all guys. We still want to have some fun with it, too. Right? So. Well, right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I also like one of the one of, one of the quotes one of you guys said, and uh, it's always kind of fun to... Uh, party on the street, <laughs> you know, well, so have a little pep in the step and yeah. So I'm just trying to, yeah. Okay. Just looking for ways to do it right the first time. I love it. Well, give us a rundown. What's been modified on the truck as of today? So, uh, it's got the edge, uh, it's got the edge juice with attitude, uh, which came on the truck when I bought it. I put an SMB air intake on it, and I deleted the muffler. And uh, it does have a three-inch lift. I'm running 35-inch tires. Uh, the stock gear ratio is the standard 373 gears. And other than that, as far as performance mods, it's just the edge and the air intake. This is the world's most common truck. This is the perfect example yeah. of what to talk about. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm just, well, well yeah. let's let's dive in and and kind of start at the uh, the most common places to upgrade, and then we'll work our way down to the probably some of the most expensive. Right. So before we okay. start any sort of discussion about what's the right upgrade, we need to know what's the purpose. So I just want to recap the notes that I have here. Um, towing a camper right now, going up to a fifth wheel. Is it a fifth wheel you're towing right now as well? No, no. Uh, what I'm towing right now is a 38 foot uh, travel trailer that's um, just um, pulled off the bumper, which so far has towed so well. I don't know if I would ever go up to this <laughs> wheel. I'm using that as like an option because I like the bed space because it is a short bed. Uh, it is the four door short bed. And uh, I personally really don't mind pulling the bumper pull, but either way, the 38 footer is 10,000 pounds. And with a large family, it's 10,000 pounds every time I pull it. <laughs> I think that's about as big of a bumper pull as you can get anyway. So I think you're about maxed out there. So if you do decide yeah. to upgrade, yeah. you, you're you're going to have to yeah. go to the fifth wheel at that option, right? But but at any rate, I think even but, this, this is a, a substantial load because I know campers and they're, it's not like pulling 10,000 pounds would say a flatbed and a bobcat on it. Um where that's a lot more aerodynamic. There's, it's not just a giant brick. Campers are basically a giant parasail behind your truck, just all of the drag in the world. You, you know, that's just what they are. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. And and so yeah. so you don't put a ton of miles on the truck right now, which I love to hear. I live in the Midwest as well. I love a a, a winter kept vehicle. Um, but it, it does mean that I assume that when you go out, you're probably going for long hauls. So we, we need something that's going to have like that ultimate level of reliability that, hey, if you guys decide you're going to go camping, I don't know, on the West Coast or on the East Coast, um, you know, that's that's days and days in a truck and a camper. You got to make sure that it, it, it fires up and it gets you point A to point B every single time flawlessly. Yes, yes. Yes, exactly. And in fact, that is the type of camping that we do. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. It doesn't come out often, but when it does, it's it's a big trip. Uh, that, that's a big deal when we're going to spec a build, right? Because that means that when you start considering tuning and you start considering support, now your vendors are, are that much more important about like, what's the availability? What's the level of service you're going to get? God forbid you ever had a problem with anything that you're buying in the, for the truck. You got to make sure that you have something to kind of keep you supported no matter where you're at. Um, so we want to factor those things in when we start thinking about this build. Uh, let's see. So one of the last things I just want to cover, do you got a power number in your head? Is there like, man, if not that I'm going to run it on the dyno at a competition, but if somebody did dyno it, this is the number I, I, I would love to see. You know, I have thought about that and I don't really have a specific number in mind. Um, I, I just know that I, uh, I know what the issues are that I have pulling it are, and I just want to be able to overcome those. And the number one issue, of course, is with 35-inch tires, I have a bit of a problem keeping it uh, pulling in the four, fourth gear. Um, and whenever I go to pass a truck, it wants to downshift. It downshifts at every single hill. So, uh, you know, I, I don't really have a power number. I don't mind going up in power if that's going to help the whole experience. Gotcha. Okay. Let's dive into that that problem a little bit more because I know you had some general questions about uh, about towing. So what are some of the struggles? So I, I know you said it it seems like it just, it wants to downshift the second you touch the throttle or the second there's any extra load. So I, I would assume cruising at like 60 miles an hour, is just right on the edge of that shift point. Correct. Correct. 60 to maybe up to 70. As, as soon as I start to lay into it, it either wants to downshift or the exhaust gas temperatures wants, want, want to start to come up. Now I can keep it over 70 pretty good on flat ground in perfect weather conditions um but it's that 
it's kind of that 60 to 70 right in there. And I just feel like if I had a little bit more power and a little better tuning in than with the correct turbo setup and whatnot, that I'd be able to be into that 60 to 70 a lot more better shape. You know, well, this is this is kind of another area. So as we go up in power, um, we we also want to keep an idea of of how we're using that power, right? How, how efficient is that power? And EGTs are a great way to gauge that. So right now, I'm correct. You have no gauges, no monitors. No, I have the edge juice with attitude with the little. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So I mean, I do have a. I am. I do have a monitor. I do have an exhaust gas temperature gauge. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I do have okay. a little bit. And I don't mind going up in power. Even though the truck also, even though the truck has a stock transmission, I fully intend to get, for just just example, like a Firepunk Stage 2 with the billet input and, and the billet output for, for the reliability and... Who knows? I mean, if I want to keep on going up in power, then the transmission is already there. And it isn't that big of a cost difference between the next step down. So I might as well go up to what I know is going to cover whatever power modifications I end up getting. Have you practiced this pitch for your wife? Because <laughs> it sounds well polished. <laughs> well, because I have such a limited budget, I spend a lot of time researching, a lot of spend, spend a lot of time at, at asking talking to you folks and I keep asking the experts because I really kind of only want to do this once. I don't want to throw a turbo and injector, possibly injectors, and then pull my trailer for a year and a half and I wholeheartedly agree. Right, and have to go do it all over again. I know it's asking a lot, but, but I don't need the, I don't know that I even really need a full on 600 horse well, and I, I think you have a couple of options no. here when you start to look at it, because for how you're using the truck, what, what I don't know that you'll ever need to upgrade your fuel system unless you have a failure. You got low miles on the truck. Yeah, it's older, and that's not always great for a fuel system to be older with low miles, but it, it's better than having four hundred or 500,000 miles on your stock CP3 and injectors. That sure as hell for sure. Um, so I, I think your fuel system, as long as it's healthy – I wouldn't really ever recommend to upgrade it. Right. Um, me personally, I would I would be very strongly considering the built trans, uh, the lift pump for additional filtration, just because if you're going to be over the road, you're going to be getting fuel at a lot of different places. And it's important to always make sure that you have good fuel running through the system. That's, that's just a no brainer, right? So I do the built trans, I do the lift pump, and I would very strongly consider a, a twin turbo kit or a compound turbo kit. Um, that that's just unbeatable in performance. Uh, do I think a Stell 64 is a fraction of the cost and going to give you great gains? hundred percent hands down. No question. We have a ton of experience with that turbo towing with that turbo setups like this. Uh, the challenge is that if you're going to be doing long trips, that that also implies to me that you're doing 10,000 pound parasail camper behind you running up elevation. And anytime we start to get into elevation, single turbos just are not as efficient as a as a compound turbo setup. Just factual engineering design. Yeah, it'll do great. But if you're ever going to have a problem, it's going to be while you're 10,000 pounds in the middle of summer running up the Eisenhower Pass trying to keep speed like that. That's when shit's going to break. You know, um, so we want to keep you keep you away from that area. Uh, so if if you're. If your long-term budget can allow it, the compound kit to me is a no-brainer. S four seventy-five over right. stock, pretty affordable on these. Thirty, don't quote me. Jump on the website and get a get a real price. Thirty-five hundred bucks, give or take. Um, now a single Stell sixty-four drop-in turbo is going to be a lot less. You're going to be looking at like fifteen fifty. We're actually running a sale right now. They're fifteen percent off. So like you could score one of those very affordably. Um, so, so everybody has to kind of get to that point where they're going to make that balance. As long as you have the EGT probe, I think you're in a good place. The, the challenge I have is that the next thing I'm going to recommend is tuning. Because if you're not going to do the turbo setup, or even maybe before you do the turbo setup, if you're going to do it in stages, you need some good solid tunes on there. 
box programmers are better than stock. I've said it many of times. Uh, but that edge juice with attitude is nowhere near doing EFI live or MM3 tuning. And 06, I would recommend EFI live tuning because you could do switch on the fly. Um, with EFI live, you're probably going to look at upgrading to an edge CTS2. Uh, we're hearing some rumors about about some news on on edge monitoring systems. So so we'll see what comes out in the near future on those. But some sort of of digital gauge display uh, similar to the edge juice, I think, would make a lot of sense. So I think those are like those three mods to me are going to put you miles ahead. Now there are other things that we can do to a Cummins to make it more reliable. And I, I I've already told you, Jerry, we're going to let our resident uh, Cummins expert, Chris Emke get on, get on a call with you on a separate kind of offline situation and walk you through your build specifically and kind of make some recommendations for you. Um, but I think in general, all of our listeners who are in this situation, like you with with this truck and this kind of scenario, I think those those regions are going to be universal. What are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, and 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 I've been researching both of those, uh, the um, uh, Stealth Turbo, and I love the Twin Kit. I've heard nothing but good things about it. My question, I guess, my next question leading into that is. Because I have a bone stock engine, the valve cover has never been off of it. What supporting mods are going to be needed for the twin turbo versus the stealth? Are they similar? Am I going to need head studs? Cummins guys are going to freak out if I don't recommend head studs for you. So like by default, talking about a Cummins, I have to recommend head studs. Because every time you look sideways at a Cummins, somebody screams you have to stud it. Um my experience has not been that bad. We've had plenty of trucks on a small tune running a single turbo. So like doing a Stealth 64 on an all stock truck okay. and doing custom tuning. We've had a lot of really, really good success with those. As you go up, yeah, you're going to need studs. Just inevitably, you're going to get to that point where you have to stud it. Uh, no question. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and and, th- and that would be for either turbo, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah. And, and those are just some more of my unknowns that I, I wasn't quite sure about. And going back to my, you know, build it once, I am I am totally willing to put studs in the budget, a lift pump in the budget, and, 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 you know, so, uh, yeah, that, <clears throat> yeah, that sounds, you know, really, really good. Yeah. I think really good. Chris is going to crush your budget because he's going to know all of the extra little add-ons and the, the little pieces that make like a big difference yeah. for you. I, I don't want to set him up to be the bad guy, but he's going to have really good advice if that helps. Uh, but the number won't look nearly yeah. as low as mine because um, I can kind of give you that general broad right. idea, but but we'll let him keep dive into it a little bit further. Uh, but I think this will be a, a solid build, man. I think this at the end of this, either way you go, I think once you're at that built trans level and you got the custom tunes on it and you have these other supporting mods to keep the truck cool, keep your heat rejection working, um, keep everything healthy. I think all of a sudden what you find is that you're like, oh, shit, it feels like I bought a new truck, you know, and that's that that's like my favorite feeling in diesel performance. Well, and that's kind of the point, And that's kind of the longer term goal is I actually kind of love this body style and I want to have driving a classic i mean by the time i retire i mean it'll be a classic you know and it'll be the last generation of the 5.9 and still be able to use it every day and pull my camper with it uh, i just think it'll be a joy god there's just something about that that puts a smile on my face i love it jerry um hey who's been helpful where where do you go to get answers who would you like to say thank you to as you've been working on this truck and you're starting to put this project together you know i don't want to sound biased but cal- calibrated power uh i have listened to all the podcasts i look at all the youtube videos and you guys have been a wealth of research and different information uh yeah i just get a lot of information, and I got a little, a whole lot of inspiration from just kind of keeping up with you guys. And well, thank you, you for the kind cool. words, Jerry. Yeah. We, we and, really appreciate it. It means yeah. a lot to us, man. Yeah, and you guys are fairly local to me. You're only a couple hours away, so and that kind of makes makes a lot of sense too. 
I love it. Feels like we're neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Jerry, I want to say thank you for coming on the show today and sharing your story with our listeners. I think this is going to be something that guys really, really resonates with our listeners. Uh, listeners, if you would like to do what Jerry's done and come on the show about your truck or ask us some questions, get over to our Facebook group. It's Fans of Diesel Performance Podcast. Uh, I know that's a long name. We'll just have to deal with it. Jump on, find us. I got a post in there with the link to sign up. You can actually just go on, sign up to be on the show, do just like Jerry did, and, you know, come over here. Help us do this, man. We we need your help. Uh, For today, this has been Paul Wilson, and thank you so much for listening. Boom, break.